Good evening. Jamaica has recorded 71 new cases of COVID-19 and three additional deaths from the virus in the last 24 hours. According to the Ministry of Health and Wellness, the latest fatalities are two males each from the parishes of St. Elizabeth and St. Anne and one female from Kingston and St. Andrew. Now this increases the country's death toll to 1,111. The total of confirmed coronavirus cases on the island since the outbreak is 50,568. Meanwhile, the new cases comprise 43 females and 28 males ranging in age from 6 to 94 years. The new cases were recorded as follows. Kingston and St. Andrew recorded 22 cases. Westmoreland recorded 12 cases. St. Anne recorded 10 cases. St. Catherine recorded 9 cases. Manchester and St. James recorded 5 cases each. Hanover, 4 cases. St. Thomas recorded 3 cases. And Clarendon recorded 1 case. Meanwhile, a total of 1,105 persons recovered from the virus in the last 24 hours, taking the total of recovered persons now to 36,882. There are 12,216 active cases of the virus on the island. In other news tonight, ground will be broken in South Trelawney, for the construction of a new fire station. Here is Javon Thomas with more on this story. Minister of Local Government Desmond McKenzie has announced that a new fire station will be constructed in South Trelawney. The minister made the announcement at yesterday's town hall meeting at the Trelawney Municipal Corporation while on his two-day visit to the parish. In speaking at the meeting, Minister McKenzie noted that there is no fire station that covers South Trelawney and hopefully by the end of August, ground will be broken for the construction of a new station. The nearest fire station to here is one in Montego Bay or over in St. Anne. And there is no fire station that covers South Trelawney. And I am pleased to advise council today that hopefully by the end of August I will be breaking grounds for the construction of a brand new fire station over in Ulster Spring in the southern part of Trelawney. It is a commitment that I gave to the member of parliament and to the councillors over there because again if there is a fire in that section of Trelawney your nearest response is either Christiana or Frank Field and by the time the truck reach there it is only just a matter of either counting the loss or just trying to give comfort. He also stated that the Falmouth Fire Station will be receiving a new... And I spoke with the commissioner this morning to say to him that of the 30 trucks that we are getting, 15 are here now, and 15 is to come by the end of September, that I am asking him to ensure that Falmouth is covered he further added that the government is committed to ensuring that a conducive environment is provided for firefighters. This government will continue to improve the work, the conditions under which the firefighters operate under. And many people will not understand the role of the firefighters. It is not just about outing fires. Any major accident, it is the firefighters that have to respond. They are our first respondent out there. And it is the commitment of this government to ensure that we provide an environment that is conducive for the firefighters 
to operate in and to provide the requisite tools to do so. Reporting for Mellow TV News, I'm Javon Thomas. Still in the parish of Trelawney, local government minister Desmond McKenzie has announced that $25 million will be spent to build a homeless shelter in the parish. Now in speaking at the groundbreaking ceremony yesterday, Minister McKenzie noted that Trelawney will be the first parish outside of Kingston to receive a shelter for the homeless. We are breaking ground today and Trelawney is the first parish outside of Kingston that will receive a shelter for the homeless population to be constructed right beside the drop-in centre. We're going to be spending some $25 million to build out the facility to accommodate more than 20 persons who can come and sleep they don't have to pay no rent. The doors will be open 24 hours a day to care for their needs. He added that eight homeless shelters will be constructed across Jamaica over the next two years. We are going to be building out eight more of these facilities right across Jamaica over the next two years. And there are going to be some parishes, because of the, the spread, the size of those parishes, when you have one in one area, it is not going to be adequate to deal with the other part of the parish. And when we get back to normal over the next two years, we are going to ensure that we create the kind of environment that will allow these people to feel wanted. Still making Mellow TV news, on Wednesday, Prime Minister Andrew Holness broke ground for the construction of a multi-purpose building at the Bustamante Hospital for Children. The new building reportedly houses a pediatric cardiac ward and an overnight parent suite. According to Prime Minister Holness, the redevelopment will continue the revitalization and upgrade the hospital's existing infrastructure, which was significantly improved over time. The Boston Manti Children's Hospital already has the distinction of being the only specialist pediatric hospital in the English-speaking Caribbean. I am extremely pleased to be here today to celebrate the unveiling of the new redevelopment plan for this vitally important institution, as well as the opening of the new drug serve pharmacy on these grounds and breaking ground for the new overnight suite for parents. There is a great sense of fulfillment in announcing these redevelopment plans. The development and implementation of this new master plan continues to revitalize and improve an existing hospital infrastructure, which over time has been significantly upgraded. For example, 1991, saw major construction of the diagnostic services block, operating theater suite, accident and emergency building, specialist outpatient block, and other essential areas. Then, in November 2017, the new cardiac wing was completed. The landmark development established the first of its kind in the public health sector with a cardiac catheterization laboratory, a 10-bed cardiac ICU, and an operating theater. He further stated that this project adds to the development of Jamaica. I will therefore focus 
on where this development fits in to the broader context of national development. The strategy of the government is to build our resilience as a country and as a people. Resilience is the ability to anticipate, prepare for, and adapt to changing conditions and withstand, respond to, and recover rapidly from shocks and disruptions. Jamaica is building its resilience. We have faced several shocks in the last five years. Indeed, multiple and parallel shocks. And Jamaica is standing and responding and is growing even stronger. Still making the news tonight, police officers in Seaforth St. Thomas arrested and charged 33-year-old Sean Lawrence of 3rd Street Kingston 12 following a robbery at a supermarket in the parish on Thursday, March 18. Reports coming into our news center tonight are that at approximately 2.15 p.m., Lawrence and four other armed men held up the staff at a supermarket in Seaforth and robbed them of an undetermined sum of money. The police were alerted and upon their arrival, they were greeted with gunfire. The men escaped. An investigation was launched and Lawrence was arrested during an operation in Kingston. He was taken to the Seaforth police station where he was charged with assault at common law and illegal possession of firearm. Lawrence is scheduled to appear before the St. Thomas Parish Court on Wednesday, July 14. The three other men are being sought by the police. As we continue with the news tonight, the St. Elizabeth police arrested and charged three men with several offenses committed in the parish, including shop breaking, larceny, receiving stolen property and conspiracy to commit shop breaking and larceny on Friday, July 2. The men have been identified as 25-year-old Kevin Thomas, otherwise called Kev of Pink Lane in Kingston, 27-year-old Orlando Richards, otherwise called Cruz of Greenvale, Manchester, and 47-year-old Tristan Smith of New Building, Nain in St. Elizabeth. Reports coming in to our new centre regarding the incident are that at about 2.20 p.m., Thomas, Richards, Smith, and several other men broke into an establishment by prying the shutter open. They reportedly stole several items including cellular phones, cellular phone accessories, and tablets amounting to approximately 3 million Jamaican dollars. The police were summoned and the vehicle in which the men were traveling was intercepted. Thomas and Richards were accosted while Smith escaped. Smith was later apprehended following an operation. The men were charged on Tuesday, July 6. Their court dates are being finalized. Still making the news tonight. Since the start of 2021, the cost of living in Jamaica has increased significantly. But the cost that has been affecting most motorists is the weekly increase in gas prices. It's not new for gas prices to increase in Jamaica, but the recent increases have resulted in motorists, especially taxi operators, having a hard time coping. We took to the streets to talk to taxi operators in western and eastern Jamaica, where they voiced their concerns about the increases in gas prices and provided recommendations for the government regarding the matter. Yeah, so to compensate the cost of the vehicle and my, my daily living and um, I would like to get a raise of fear um, in order for I to see much more towards my bills and my um, cost for the vehicle repair and the cost for insurance etc. I definitely don't want the raise of fear because the people already don't, it's not really able to to afford 
the fear. But I used to pay like six thousand five hundred dollars to fill my gas tank, and now I pay like nine thousand dollars. So that's like two thousand five hundred extra, and we're not getting extra money. And I know, like, no, the road is not really up like it used to be. So I would rather for the for the for the um for the gas price to go down than the fear to be increased because the people is already suffering and it would be very hard for them to start to pay in the 50% extra. In all honesty, we really do need an increase. And 50% that would be okay for us. With the gas price, I don't think the government really have a view on that to roll it back or anything like that because it's way beyond his control. You see the the, the price gone up. But when is I haven't seen it decrease at any time. It's keep going, going. Two times in one week, sometimes it just keep going, and and that is crazy. We can't, we can't, we can't operate like this out here. You understand? Sometimes you come out, all your work for is gas. You make no money. Food raise, everything raise, um, gas raise. So you're making less money and buying more gas. We have to go to the supermarket like just like anybody else. Light bill raise, everything raise. So so we're paying out more, and and still less coming in. You understand? So the system is it, just crazy. It affects me personally because I'm up right now under this pandemic. It, it, um, everything gets slow, and matter of fact, every turns they just raise. So we're under pressure, we're under stress. And the worst type of stress is the internal stress. So you must look into it and try to give it some raise because we're under pressure. Okay, we don't want to demonstrate, and we don't want to talk about no fear thing and a raise of fear because the people they can't take the raise of fear neither, you know. Because the, the, the people the money, the little money the people might get. It, it would have wicked for you because they raise a fear. And, and them and, and the money in a raise. So and want for them fear in a raise. Them. Yeah, prefer them come balance the thing. You know? And stop raise up the gas each and every time. Why it's rough? Because it's rough you know, because you see when you go come a road a morning time over by a